Good afternoon again from my home studio slash biology lab slash craft room. So today we're going to be looking at the internal organs and what we're going to do is we're going to start out by looking at the thoracic organs first. There's not too many in the thoracic cavity. The thoracic cavity is going to be divided by the diaphragm right here. And once we get past this diaphragm here, we now are going to enter what's called the abdominal cavity. So we're going to look at a few things up here in the thoracic cavity and then we'll move on down to the digestive organs mostly is what we're going to look at in this short video here. Now again you have the lab document with still photographs of all of these images and parts so you can refer to that lab document and there's also a chart in the lab document that you can fill in for the various functions of the organs and for some of them I will be telling you what the functions of those organs are as we go through them. So we're going to start up here in the thoracic cavity and the first thing that I want you to notice is I want you to notice this large swelling right here. This large swelling right here is the larynx which is going to be kind of the beginning of now moving into our trachea. The trachea here is going to be a soda straw, kind of like a bendy soda straw that you might have had like when you were a kid. So I'm going to loop my trachea and so here's the trachea right here which is often called the windpipe. So of course this is going to be the path of air as we start to move into our respiratory system. So air will move down through our larynx It'll come down in through our trachea. It's reinforced with that cartilage, hyaline cartilage, from the tissues that you had in your lab document as well, so that the trachea does not collapse. So I'm not going to dig through here all the way, but the trachea is going to eventually branch off into our two lungs. So over here we have the left lung, and over here, it's a little harder to see, but on the other side of the heart, we're going to see the right lung. In the middle here is going to be our heart. Okay, so this morning when I was opening her up, I accidentally cut the heart. That should not normally be there. This is the heart right here. Now, on either side here, if you come back up here to where we are with the larynx, just below the larynx, you're going to see on either side, right as we transition from the larynx to the trachea, you're going to see two little glands, this brown mass right here on either side of the trachea. This is the thyroid gland. Both of these are the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is going to produce hormones that are going to be involved in regulating your metabolism. Now, the last thing we're going to look at here in the thoracic cavity is going to be the beginning of our digestive tract or our alimentary canal. Behind the trachea, you're going to see and I'll pull my trachea back with my forceps here. I've already separated this out. So posterior to the trachea is going to be this tube right here. And that flat tube is the esophagus. Now I want you to notice the difference here. Look at the trachea. The trachea looks like a soda straw that's always open. Notice that my esophagus is flat. Of course, it makes sense. Remember I said just a couple of seconds ago that the trachea is reinforced with cartilage rings because it does need to stay open all of the time so air can continually pass down and ventilate our lungs. The esophagus on the other hand is only needed when you're swallowing for the digestive process and the only time that your esophagus is going to expand is actually going to be when you're swallowing and then as to accommodate the size of the food that's traveling down the esophagus here as we then move down into the abdominal cavity and then eventually into our stomach. So those are the thoracic cavity organs. We'll come back later and we'll look at some of the blood vessels that are going to be found up here as well in another video. So as we transition from the thoracic cavity down into the abdominal cavity, I want you to notice this muscle right here. I mentioned it earlier. This muscle right here is called the diaphragm. I'm going to pull him up here and you can see that he goes all the way back onto the back of the body wall. Now. If you like fajitas, which I think might be on the menu tonight at my house, and you buy traditional fajitas, okay, traditional fajitas is a cut of meat that they call the skirt steak. And traditional beef fajitas, not chicken fajitas, because chicken fajitas is actually just breast meat of the chicken. But if you buy traditional beef fajitas, the muscle that you are actually eating is you are actually eating the diaphragm of that cow. So there's a little fun fact there about the diaphragm if you didn't know that. 
Now, as so we pass the diaphragm and we move into the abdominal cavity, I want you to notice the very large organ that you have right here. This large organ that takes up most of the abdominal space is actually going to be the liver. Now, I want to go back for a second and I want to talk to you all about something called the coelom. The coelom is something that we talked about at the very beginning of the semester when we start talking about these things called body cavities. And one of the things about that body cavity is that it accommodates um, the development of very large complex organs. So what I want you to notice is I want you to notice this is basically the coelom that's being occupied by all of these complex organs here. If I were to take and remove all of these organs, you would have this very large empty space down in here. That very large empty space is the coelom. And we talked about that way back when we talked about development of the different animals. Uh, when we actually were actually meeting for class, those were the good old days. Now, if we come back here, I want to pick up and I want to look at this organ that's going to be behind the liver. There's a little tiny little sack, a little pouch. And so here's a little piece of my liver, one of the lobes of my liver right here. And this little gland right here, kind of a green, it could be a little bit of green color. Um, there's a little green hue to it. The green color is due to what this gallbladder does. That's what this is. This is the gallbladder. And the gallbladder is an accessory organ in digestion. What it does is it actually stores and releases the bile that's actually going to be involved in the digestive processes. Now, the liver, largest abdominal organ here, is going to be involved in a whole lot of different digestive processes and also metabolic processes. So it detoxifies a lot of things for us. It processes the nutrients. It stores some vitamins. So this is a very large, hard-working organ and it takes up most of the space of the abdominal cavity. Now, one of the things I forgot to mention was the function of this diaphragm right here. So I'm gonna talk about that before I move on down into the other digestive organs. The diaphragm is going to be the organ, excuse me, the muscle that's going to be involved in ventilating your lungs. So as you inhale and as you exhale, the 